the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The shepherd went in haste and Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph. And the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All the word in Then the shepherds were told, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told them. When eight days were completed, for a circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Friends, brothers, and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. For celebrating with me in this holy sacrifice of the Mass, his father, Alexander Dawa, the chaplain of the Army Support Command of Philippine Army. To our Vice Commander, Major General Agnes Marbahauser, to our Acting Chief of Staff and the Commander of the Headquarters and Headquarters Support Group, Philippine Army, Brigadier General Moises Tim Naidu Junior Sir, to our Chief of, Chief of Staff, Headquarters and Headquarters Support Group, Colonel Ivan Sanchez Sir, and our Deputy Commander, Headquarters and Headquarters Support Group, Colonel Napoleon Zilbera, and the uh, acting veteran commander of the Civil Military Operation Regiment, Philippine Army, Colonel Marcus C. Gaia, Philippine Army, members of the conference group Alpha, our Army Sergeant Major, Chief Master Sergeant Rohelio P. Kakbay, Philippine Army, other officers, enlisted, enlisted personnel, and civilian human resources person. Our dependents present, the, the officer, the Philippine Army Ladies Club, brothers and sisters in the Lord, a blessed new year to you all. According to a non biblical version of creation story, on the first day, God created the caravan, and God told the caravan, Your mission in life is to plow the field under the sun to support the farmer. And with that mission, I am giving you a lifespan of 60 years. But the parable replied, Lord, plowing the field under the heat of the sun for 60 years, that's a very tough life. I could not enjoy it. Perhaps I could only do it for 20 years. So, Lord, can I take just the 20 years and give you back the other 40? And God agreed. In the second day, God created the mountain. And God said, the blood is going to be a place. No mountain trees. Make them up. And with that mission, I am giving you a life span of 20 years. But the mountain replied, Lord, doing monkey tricks for 20 years, what a falling life would it be? Lord, can I just save the 10 years and I'm giving you back the other 10? And God agreed. On the third day, God created the dog and God said, your life's mission is to sit in front of your house and bark at anyone who comes in and passes by. With that mission, I am giving you a lifespan of 20 years. But the dog replied, Lord, barking for 20 years, that's too long. I could only bark up to 10 years. So Lord, I'm going to take the 10 and I'm giving you back the other 10. And God agreed. On the fourth day, God created man. 
And God said, because you are my most loved and precious creator, all you have to do is eat, sleep, play, enjoy life. Do nothing. Just enjoy. And with that, I am giving you a lifespan of 20 years. But the man did like, Lord, doing nothing, enjoying life just for 20 years, that's too short. Can I make a proposal? Lord, I'm going to accept the 20 years that you're offering to me, but I will also take the 40 years that the carabao did not accept. And the 10 that the monkey returned to you, and the other 10 that the dog gave you back. And that will make my life, my life span 80 years. Is that okay? And God agreed. That is why for the first 20 years of our life, we eat, we sleep, we play, we enjoy life. Why, why our parents are taking care of us? For the next 40 years of our life, we work hard to support our family. And after retirement, for the next 10 years, we do monkey tricks to entertain our grandchildren. And for the last years, 10 years of our life, we sit down in front of our house and embark at everybody. At what stage of life are we in at present? Man states, carnival states, monkey states, or dog states? Although these stages of life cannot really be truly or similarly applicable to all of us, because we know that there are people who, though they are already in their 30s, 40s, and 60s, but they are still living in man's space. But they eat, they sleep, they play, they enjoy life. Because these are people who were born with golden spoon. That they don't have to work hard to earn their living. But there are also those people who, even in their early age, in their young age, in their teens, or even in their 60s, they are already or are still working hard to support their family. But brothers and sisters, at whatever stage of life, we are at present, new year, always answers in, new beginning, a fresh start, new hope, and new opportunities for all of us. Thus, as we welcome the new year, in whatever way, we used to welcome it. You know, we Filipinos, we have so many paniniwala and pamahiin when it comes to New Year's celebration. There are those who believe that in order to get a little older, they have to jump 12 times at 12 o'clock midnight. Pero din nagsasabing to attract abundance and prosperity. We have to fill our pockets and our wallets with new bills and coins and scatter coins all over the house. Or wear a polka dot because anything round signifies abundance. And so we are asked to prepare round troops on our table. And there are also those who believe that we need to eat, we need to prepare. Part of our food preparation is the spaghetti, bihon, para hahaba di mana ang ating buhay. But in whatever way we welcome the new year, let us not forget the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Blessed Mother welcome the new beginning and new life with a prayer. According to the Gospel, when the Blessed Virgin Mary began her life as a mother, began her life with Jesus, she pondered, she treasured everything in her heart. And so, we must welcome the New Year with a prayer. And what do we pray for in the New Year? First of all, let us thank the Lord for the year that was. And you know, there are so many things that we thank God for. The blessings of life and good health amidst COVID-19 pandemic. The fact that our family is complete, is still intact, that is already a great blessing from the Lord. The freedom that we continuously enjoy. And we must be aware, we must always remember that our freedom is not free. Our freedom was built and continuously sustained by the blood of our heroes. 
if we are able to celebrate Christmas and welcome the new year safely with our family and as a community, it is because there are dedicated and courageous people who deny themselves of the joy of being with their family, not only for this occasion, not only for tonight, but for many occasions, important occasions in their life and family to safeguard our freedom and peace. And that is the work, that is the, the mission, that is the duties and responsibilities of our soldiers, for instance. Thus, as we thank God for the blessing of freedom, let us not forget to tell God to pray for our soldiers, our soldiers who sacrifice their comfort, who risk their lives, and some of them even lost their lives in fulfilling their duties. Let us thank the Lord for giving us courageous, brave, and gallant soldiers. And let us not forget to tell God to humbly ask Him to extend His protection upon, upon our soldiers, anoint with success their effort to attain just and lasting peace, grant complete healing and recovery to our wounded and sick soldiers, and welcome into His kingdom our departed soldiers. And brothers and sisters, we must thank God not only for our success, not only for our accomplishment, not only for the good things that happened to us. Whatever happened in the past year, good or bad, happy or sad, we leave that all now with gratitude in the heart of God. We must thank God for giving us the new year, the gift of the new beginning, new hope, new opportunity, that the new year is indeed an opportunity for all of us to make up for any shortcomings we may have had in the past year, especially in our relationship with God, with our family, and in our work, that the new year is indeed an opportunity for us to become better person than last year, to become a thoughtful, caring, loving husband or wife, father or mother, son or daughter, brother or sister. But of course, just like last year, these opportunities are just an offer. We need to accept them. We need to act on them. We need to accept the challenge. Second, we must surrender to God. Although the term surrender is not in the vocabulary of the Philippine army, but we must learn to surrender to God the year ahead of us. Because we do not know what our future holds, but we know that God holds our future in His hands, and that is enough. Whatever lies ahead of us, in the coming year, 2023, we have nothing to fear. We must not be afraid of. We have nothing to worry. Why? Because our God on Christmas, eight days ago, revealed himself to us as the Emmanuel, or the God who is with us. And so our God will accompany us in every single day of this year. All we need to do is just acknowledge his presence. We must talk to him openly. We must talk to him regularly in our prayer. Kanino ba tayo nagsusumbong pag mayroon tayong problema sa bahay? Pag mayroon kayong problema sa asawa? Pag mayroon kayong problema sa mga anak? Sa mga kumari ninyo? Sa mga kapitbahay ninyo? Sa Diyos tayo magsusumbong. At sigurado, God will always have an answer to everything that we bring to him in prayer. And lastly, we must humbly ask the Lord to give us the courage and strength to face whatever lies ahead of us, especially the grace to carry on our mission, our mission for God, for our country, for the Philippine Army, and for our family. 
So to everyone, a happy and a blessed new year.